The war in Ukraine has thrown into bold relief the possibility of a future conflict between Russia and NATO. Not since the Cold War have tension been so high, Russia is deeply involved in a war that shows no sign of slowing down or stopping. Russia's ground forces have seen rapid expansion as a result of the war in Ukraine. For Russia, the only path to a military victory is through attrition and use of its larger armed forces to ground down the smaller Ukraine army. Moscow has slowly absorbed costly lessons from the beginning of the war. Poor quality troops are better suited for defense. Russia has learned that only better quality soldiers can be used for offensive action. Elite units like Marine Infantry, airborne troops known as VDV and Russia's Spetsnaz Special Forces now receive better equipment, longer training and better officer training. They are also being dramatically expanded. The Marines, for example, are being increased from 5 brigades or about 20,000 soldiers to 5 divisions, meaning about 75,000 soldiers. Russia's military planners are moving rapidly away from the brigades as a basic military unit to the division. The extremely high death rate has taught Russia that a brigade cannot sustain heavy losses. A larger division can absorb these losses and fight until replacements arrive. Despite the obvious lack in military equipment, like newer model of tanks T-90s, some advances have been made. Russia has finally cottoned on the fact that drones in all shapes and sizes are vital for 21st century conflicts. The adoption of these new technologies has allowed Russian forces to spot Ukrainian military buildups and attack far earlier. Russia's electronic warfare units have been effective in jamming Ukrainian tactical communication networks and spoofing Ukrainian drones, denying Ukrainian officers with information they need to make quick decisions and hampering their offensive operations. Perhaps the weakest of Russia's military branches is its air force. Its consistently poor performance is masked by poor doctrine and equipment losses that have been hard to replace. Unlike Western militaries, Russia's Air Force isn't trained for strategic air campaigns, focusing solely on sporting ground units where needed. Despite being at least four times the size of Ukraine's, it was unable to destroy airfields, ammunition dumps, and radar sites in the opening hours of the invasion. This is very different to Western Air Force which while also sporting ground units are able to comprehensively blind its enemy, destroying key targets and large formations on the ground. They can cause strategic damage in the opening minutes of any conflict, enabling their forces to advance relatively unhindered. In an effort to offset this weakness, long-range missiles have been used to great effect, penetrating deep into Ukraine despite Kyiv's comprehensive air defenses. Despite all this, Russia's navy remains a potent force safe in the northern and eastern ports, out of the range of Ukrainian missiles and drones. The war in Ukraine showed both Russia and the world that anyone fighting an industrial-level war in the future will need vast amounts of missiles that are accurate, cheap, and deadly. For that, Russia has turned to its allies. Iran has helped extensively with its production of long-range attack drones like the Shahid-136 and large donation of tactical missiles like the FAB-360 to be used against the Ukrainian military. China, while holding off on sending actual weapon system to Russia, has been sending large quantities of salt battle a white powder used in the manufacture of explosives and advanced electronic chipsets, offsetting gaps in Russian production of advanced weaponry. The effect of the war on the Russian military has been profound. While it has learned from its many mistakes, its armed forces have been exposed to the world as being barely competent at best. Its economy is struggling to keep up with the losses even though it receives help from its allies. The alliance has been revitalized by Russia's invasion in 2022 and defense spending of its members has soared. Production of arms in Europe and the United States has spiked dramatically as the war has given Western military planners an idea of the amount of weapon NATO forces will need in the event of a major war. The quality of NATO's troops is far better in terms of training and equipment. Differences in command and control between countries have been ironed out after decades of military cooperation and exercises. Western Air Forces focuses on campaign of complex air operation designed to destroy an opponent's ability to see, move, produce and sustain itself.
Combined with the notable difference in the quality of Western weapons, all this adds up to the conclusion that NATO would quickly prevail in any conventional war against Russia. A danger being that a series of defeats might force Moscow to use tactical nuclear weapons or face total defeat. However, a pause in the fighting brought about by a peace deal would allow Russia to rearm. It will likely keep its defense budget high, having reached its peak of 6% of its overall budget spent on defense. It is unlikely President Vladimir Putin would have ordered the invasion of Ukraine had he known just how poorly the Russian military was going to perform. He believed, as did many Western observers, that the Russian armed forces had been modernized, better equipped, and now had the ability to win in any industrial-level war certainly against the inferior armed forces of Ukraine. He was wrong then, but with the pause in fighting, the modernization and re-equipping of his armed forces, it's possible he may make the same mistake again in the near future, this time against a NATO member.